Okay, so hello, I'm Jenny Callender, ST3. So I'm going to talk to you a bit about the background, literature and features related to amelanotic melanomas. I'm going to tell you about our teledermatology service in Gwent, South Wales, and our experience of picking up amelanotic and poorly pigmented melanomas through this service. And then I'm going to talk about why we think demoscopy is essential in teledermatology. So, as background, amelanotic melanomas are rare. They're thought to represent less than 2% of all melanomas, and they're notoriously difficult to diagnose. But amelanotic melanomas and poorly pigmented melanomas may be referred to us via teledermatology. Looking in the literature, Thomas et al. did a large study of over 3,000 melanomas. They found that amelanotic melanomas were generally at a higher stage at diagnosis than pigmented, and they had a higher hazard of death. But once tumour stage at diagnosis was taken into account, survival didn't differ. So they concluded that survival after diagnosis of amelanotic melanoma is poorer because of its more advanced stage at diagnosis, and that it presents at a more advanced stage because it's difficult to diagnose. Another study by Menzies et al. sought to look at the dermatoscopic features of amelanotic and poorly <coughs> pigmented melanoma. They noted that melanoma has been shown to be more accurately diagnosed with demoscopy, but that there's less literature around amelanotic melanomas, and that the approach for melanocytic lesions is ineffective for poorly pigmented lesions. So they took 12 clinicians and asked them to look at a a large number of dermatoscopic digital images, including melanomas and amelanotic melanomas. The clinicians were blinded to the histological diagnosis, but were asked to pick out the dermatoscopic features from the images so that the authors could then see which features were associated with which type of lesion. They found that the most uh, strongly negative uh, predictors for all melanomas were multiple milia-like cysts, predominantly comma-shaped vessels, symmetrical pigmentation and multiple blue-grey globules. And the most strongly positive predictive uh, factors were blue-white veil, scar-like depigmentation, and the other factors that you can see here. But because they were particularly interested in amelanotic and poorly pigmented melanoma, they looked then just at the vascular positive predictors. Uh, and these were predominantly central vessels, hairpin vessels, milky red-pink areas, greater than one shade of pink, dotted and linear irregular vessels, and predominantly linear regular vessels. So they concluded that, although the diagnostic accuracy of demoscopy for melanoma lacking significant pigment is inferior to pigmented lesions, there are still important dermatoscopic features that can distinguish them from benign lesions, and that the importance of looking at vascular studies for the diagnosis of lesions lacking pigment is clear from their study. So now I'm going to tell you a bit about our service. So in our area, all urgent suspected cancers, so SCCs and melanomas, are referred via the standard two-week wait pathway. But routine lesions, including BCCs, have the option of being referred via, via teledermatology, in which case they are referred to one of our local medical photography departments. They're referred to a clinic in, the, in those departments. Uh, at that appointment, macroscopic and dermatoscopic images are taken and uploaded digitally, where they're then reviewed um, and triaged by one of the consultant dermatologists. Over 16 months in our service, we've picked up 21 melanomas, which were referred via teledermatology as routine lesions and when we look at the breakdown we can see a high number were clinically either amelanotic or just partially pigmented and that's presumably why they were unsuspected in primary care. This slide shows a selection of the melanomas referred via teledermatology. You can see that um, a lot of them look like quite non-specific pink patches, nodules, or papules, they were usually referred as either query BCCs or query Bowens. 
And I'm going to talk through each case one by one just to show you why we thought the dermatoscopic images were crucial for our triage. <coughs> so this patient was referred with this crusted, scaly patch. On demoscopy, we could see that there was a, a range of different types of blood vessels, including linear irregular vessels and dotted vessels. And this was throughout the lesion. And we thought this looked unusual, so therefore it was upgraded to be reviewed urgently. This next patient had had a lesion on their arm for a number of months, went to see the GP about something else and just happened to mention it on their way out the door. And the GP wasn't sure what it was, so referred via teledermatology. From the dermatoscopic image, it was much clearer to see that there was subtle pigmentation here. Uh, there were also predominant central vessels and a sort of peripheral black dust that was a feature we saw in a number of the partially pigmented melanomas and we hadn't seen reported previously in the literature. There was also a large white featureless area that was involved. <coughs> this next patient had a, a papule that had enlarged. Again, from the demoscopy, it's much clearer to see that there is subtle pigmentation. There's the beginning um, of a white featureless area. And we also felt that the blood vessels varied in size. Some of them were quite chunky, and the consultants didn't feel it was in keeping with um, the vessels of a benign nevus. So again, it was upgraded. This next patient um, had a crusted asymptomatic patch on the scalp. They were elderly and unsure how long it had been present for. Dermatoscopic images showed a large white featureless area. And the really uh, brilliant magnification that we get from the images showed lots of very fine irregular linear vessels around the lesion. This final lesion was on the dorsum of a foot, referred as query Bowen's disease. And again, we saw a mixture of blood vessel types with dotted peripherally and some more uh, larger curly vessels centrally. So just to recap, um, we feel that there's a number of features that could only be picked up clearly on the dermatoscopic images, including subtle pigmentation, white featureless areas, peripheral black dust greater than one vessel type, and milky red areas. Just to recap our experience, we've had a high number of melanomas uh, with minimal or no pigment referred to us via teledermatology. We feel that the dermatoscopic images have been essential in picking up subtle clues that have distinguished them from benign lesions. Um, and the dermatoscopic image magnification has allowed us to get even more detail than perhaps you would get doing demoscopy in clinic. The cons consultants looking at these images um, every day also feel that they've improve their skills in picking up subtle features uh, through this. So in conclusion, amelanotic melanoma can be easily missed, leading to delayed diagnosis and increased risk of death. Um, the dermatoscopic images are vital um, to help us make this diagnosis, and therefore they're vital in teledermatology. Thank you very much.